welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction, haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And this week episode, this week listeners, this week episode, yes, yes I'm speaking to my own episode. <laughs> this is getting made up. Yes, this week, dear listener, we have a very special treat for you. A legend in the industry, or at least in his own mind, I'm not sure which. <laughs> But yes, we have Mr. Jim Warfield of Raven's Grin Inn, one of the most iconic and well-known haunted attractions in the country. That's year-round. That's year-round, yes. And we are so excited to have you. Jim, how are you doing? And thank you for seeing us on your day off. Day off, air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've you know, got a lot to do out here all the time. I'm always working on something, whether it's just sawing up a tree or sweeping the sidewalk or uh, building a new creature or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, that is one thing that we, you do see. We, we took the tour last night, and I, I got to say, I, words fail. Yeah. Is all I'm going to say about it. I can't even begin to spoil it or describe it, but it was a very unique experience. But every turn, every corner showed how much love and dedication and work you've put into this place. And, you know, I guess you're, we're threading the line between insanity and obsession. <laughs> There's a line there. There's <laughs> a line he crossed it a long time ago, huh? And he's looking at it in the rearview mirror. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I guess the first question is, how did you get started? All those, almost 30 years ago now. 30 years ago, isn't it? Oh yeah, I've had the house 30 years. Well, as a little kid, I was born in 1949. World War II was just over, but technology was going crazy. And a couple years later, we had a nuclear submarine going into the water forever. And jet planes and rocket planes flying higher, higher and faster. And... Television screens getting better and bigger, and just everything going boom crazy. And in and with all that, they Hollywood re rehash the old uh, Universal spooky movies, and the new science fiction movies came out at the same time. And as a little kid, it was just all wow, what's going to be next? Wow, look at that! And just more, bigger, faster, further, you know. And just it's in, just the world was incredible, you know, in the mm-hmm. 1950s when I was a kid. And all other kids seem to think so too. Mm-hmm. And you know, we collected comic books, and my my cousin, my older cousin, had a big collection of the banned comic books the government said were too evil to sell anymore. <laughs> and they used to scare the hell out of me at my grandma's house. I'd walk down the steps into the basement and pick a comic or two out of the old turkey box right <laughs> next to a big hole in the floor where they would drop <laughs> things down and keep them cool. And I knew something's in that hole waiting for me. Got somebody when I came back. It's gonna grab me. <laughs> You know, but anyway, yeah. That sounds like inspiration for part of the cellar. <laughs> well, then I had an older neighbor kid, Mickey Hartman, who would, he was tall enough he could drop the lid on my parents' concrete coal bin. It was no longer in use for coal right next to their house, sort of half in the ground. And he'd tell my friend Mike and I scary stories. They're all the same story. Usually he'd be down in the park, he'd fall down a big hole in the ground, and the devil was going to grab him. And when he said, The devil grabbed me, he grabbed me in the ribs and tickled me, and then grabbed my friend Mike in the ribs and tickled him. And, <laughs> So one day I said, Mike, I said to Mike, Mike, as soon as Mickey drops that lid and gets dark, let's do and I go to the empty corner of the room. <laughs> and, Mickey, and then they don't, what? And then, what? And then we start laughing, of course, and we were real on one corner left, and, you know, and Mickey was sort of my idol as a kid because he was a smart kid and he, all this stuff. And I asked my mother recently, I said, so what, what, what did you think of Mickey Arm as an adult? Well, we kind of thought it was like Eddie Haskell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's sort of where I got some of my inspiration, along with the old monster comic, monster magazines, and all the comic books, and going to the movies. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. When, um, so was the house the first thing that you started with haunt the haunt industry, or oh, oh, did no. you? No, no. I had, well, I had my own haunted house, the basement, like Timothy McVeigh did, and mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and. Uh, it yeah, by the way, thank you for showing us that last <laughs> night. <laughs> Making me feel even creepier and more weird than already did. Man, my haunted house was run a piece of thread over a water pipe and hang a piece of Kleenex to it, look like a ghost, and say, look at that, and then make the ghost go up and down. <laughs> but the thing concerned my mother and the neighbor lady was I had a bunch of kids down there and I had a candle burning and I think I almost had Pat Bowsman hypnotized. <laughs> I had a book on hypnotism and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I told this story to... To, to Pat and some friends standing there, I said, and to this day, Pat's wife doesn't understand where that check for 100 bucks goes every week. <laughs> go 
close to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really effective hypnotist. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's lasted years. I, I might need. I might need. Can I borrow that book? <laughs> 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 that, that actually sounds really good. <laughs> so how old were you when you were doing that? Oh, I was just about 10, 11 years old. Oh, oh well. Okay. Of course, when I had the, my first haunted house, I had some helper kids come down. We were playing with the other. And little John Irons, he told his mother, he says, I'm going down to Jim Moorfield's whorehouse today. <laughs> no, you mean horror. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. And Slight. <laughs> so and I ended up at a house that was previously a whorehouse right here. So yeah. At least that's what they tell me. So, you know. yeah. <laughs> well, they tell you a lot of things about this house over mm-hmm. the years, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah. When you bought this house, um, you, uh, I was reading on the side notes where you saved it from demolition, basically. Supposedly they were going to tear it down. Right. Uh, you bought it, you saved it, and you've added electricity to it and plumbing mm-hmm. and 80 million other things. I think just in the one room we're sitting in. <laughs> um <laughs> Tell me about the process of building out this house. and Well, the house had sat empty for two years. And before that, it had a series of landlords that didn't put any money back into the house. Mm-hmm. And they clearly couldn't afford to because nobody's renting these apartments. And then the one guy that did put money into it made five apartments out of three. And the two apartments he made were dinky little apartments. And the one was like living in the attic and, ugh, you know. But they looked nice. Mm-hmm. And so then nobody did anything for years in this place and when I bought the house they had holes in the roof as big as a softball right mm-hmm. straight through. Some yeah. beams in the basement were rotted off and sagging and bagging and electrical was total junk as was the plumbing was total junk. <coughs> when I say junk I mean the sewer pipe went out the north side of the house half an inch under the ground. <laughs> north side of the house, north of the sun and then it went west and by the time we got the parking lot it was 95 feet away and it only had a very slight drop to it. So sometimes the plumbing would just freeze up for a couple of days, and yeah. yeah. And the, you know, the water pipe itself was all crap, and just everything was junk. And the wiring in the house actually got condemned, and had to move out. And uh, some of the worst wiring in the house was actually some of the newest wiring that some carpet, some guy had done. They hired up, uh, they wired up 220 baseboard heaters with 50 amp breakers, which means the breaker would never kick until the house was ashes. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad perchance work on this? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, judging from the, uh, the wiring in the garage. Yeah, <laughs> Your garage, I don't have a garage. Yeah, yeah in my yeah. garage. Yeah, my garage and the wiring. And just, just curious. Not that I know of. I don't think he's Mount ever Carol. been here. Okay. <laughs> worth, worth asking. That, yeah. that sounds like something he might have done at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Well, then I was in the Mount Carroll JCs, and we did the JC Haunted House, and... Uh, that was a learning experience, learning to work around other people with their own ideas after they tear my ideas apart. And uh, <laughs> Well, know, that's no fun. That's no fun. But I always got, the, I always got to be the cleanup guy. I always had to truck away everything when it was all done. Now, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it goes, you know. But, uh, well, you kept a few things from it. The J.C. era. Oh, yeah. The fact that this was the J.C. on it house at one time. Yeah. Just yeah. the wine cellar in the basement. That's yeah. all. There were people living upstairs at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so people living upstairs would see lines for the haunt down in the basement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> but they did scare some people, I think, down there because nobody knew that wine cellar was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently they didn't know it was there for quite some time. <laughs> so oh, after yeah. you, you dropped them in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah That's fun. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, it, it's, I'm even sitting in the room or sitting in the parlor recording this, and I'm looking at everything... It's been accumulated, and I just keep finding new things. It's like watching a movie for the hundredth time, and you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's absolutely incredible. Well, even, even my wife, Jessica, she's been here fifteen years, and she'll say, "Oh, you did something new." No, I was there twenty years ago. And, you know, <laughs> so much stuff, and I, I've made almost all this stuff. Yeah. With the one exception, Jerry, Jeremy Bohr, professional mask maker, used to live across the alley from me, and he made most of the masks we see in the house. Well, how did you? go about getting the skills to build all these things because there's such a wide variety of stuff it's everything from mechanical to pneumatic to well my great grandfather spencer in chadwick illinois just seven miles down the road he's still selling cars he's 95 years old and his three boys were his mechanics my grandfather one of those boys and then my grandfather ely and came from ely england i guess and that's where everybody's a gunsmith <laughs> and the warfields came from england and they were always uh in the tinner business and a little bit of plumbing and old furnaces and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And then my Uncle Gibb, he was in Ford Mechanic all his life, and my Uncle Ted, recently deceased, he worked for Bullet Corporation in the 
computer graphics part, and they designed all sorts of big machine tools there. So I guess it's kind of natural in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of inherited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you've built everything that I've seen from, like, mechanical monsters to large, complicated props out of a variety of materials mm -hmm. to teeny tiny little detail pieces <laughs> I don't know how you had the precision to make yeah. or the patience for that matter. Yeah, I actually stayed behind a little bit and studied how you made the, the head move forward down in the basement because people um, in haunted houses uh, it's a dog looking thing. Oh. Um, they have big machines that have an animal come out towards you and it's all <laughs> You know, motors and gears and... and $10,000 in yeah, exactly. this one giant prop. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I, used, I used to go to Transworld. Funny thing was, uh -huh. there were people on here that were going to Transworld and they never told me there was a Transworld. <laughs> yeah, and then... They like, didn't want you to get ideas. Well, not just Clinton, Clinton, Iowa, 25 miles away, the Creeps for Charity, all dressed up like monsters. They'd do things to raise money for people that were down mm -hmm. in bad shape, you know. They were going to Transworld. And then the guy and his wife, uh, about 35, 40 years ago, moved into Savannah and have a big mansion there, and they built costumes forever. Mm -hmm. And they knew about Transworld, but nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> and so one March, March, cold March day, I'm out in my side yard building a coffin, and a guy pulls up an old van with Missouri plates on. He says, oh, you got a haunted house. And I said, yeah, I have a haunted house, too, in Missouri. Well, isn't that something? How did you find down the back alley? Oh, I drove away. And this later, the guy pulls up with Michigan plates. Oh, I have a haunted house in Michigan. Wait <laughs> And then the third guy pulls up, well, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> yeah. How are you guys finding me in the middle of no place? And all, you know, well, they, oh, it's Transworld in Chicago, what's that? <laughs> well, I went to Transworld 12 or 13 years old time. I knew about it in Chicago, and I only spent maybe 350 or 400 bucks there. Because mm -hmm. I build my own stuff, you know? Yeah. And I don't use glow-duck, glow-duck, glow-in-the-dark paint or other stuff, so there you go. <laughs> so you don't use glow-in-the-dark paint, that's interesting. Well, there's a sample on the on the piano behind you. Yeah. Little teeny dots. The guy <laughs> yeah. gave me that transfer for free, a little bottle. Let's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I that explains that. I was just to drink it and see what happened, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were talking about the, the the car last night, and I noticed that there were headlights glowing in the dark. So. And those scared the hell out of you people. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they did. Now, the glow-in-the-dark uh, statue up there and the glow-in-the-dark mask, those are, you know, factory-made glow-in-the-dark statues. Yeah. But yeah. Other than that, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So, what's it like running? You, you said, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, and after driving here from St. Louis, I'm inclined to agree with the statement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's it like running a haunt out in the middle of nowhere? Well, believe it or not, this is not really that bad of a location in some respects, because if you're in Chicago and you go to the Mississippi River, Mm -hmm. We're right now the shortest line. Mm -hmm. We have Route 64, and we're just 10 miles from the Mississippi <coughs> River. And the Palisades Park, which is very popular on the river, the big cliffs and everything. And the widest spot in the entire Mississippi River is just down at Thompson because they built a big you know, dam there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's always been a place where people like to go camping. You know? right. And uh, we've got a lot of woods here, and that's a very pretty part of the land with all the hills and valleys we have because mm -hmm. the, the glacier missed us millions of years ago and went on past and down the state of Illinois with all that. <laughs> boring flat land right. and uh, there's a lot of caves there's some caves around here and like say rock formations and cliffs and things and so mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty and kind of private with all the little valleys we would just build a house in the valley and never see them again you know? yeah. <laughs> well now I know where to go into hiding yes, <laughs> <Right>. yes. <laughs> screw Key West I'm coming here to hide out <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a writer a retired writer who's just north of town a hidden place you can't really find it he came to the town, this is 1964 red XK Jaguar one time a couple of years ago. I looked at him and said, thank you for making my day by driving that car to town, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. 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 So when did you, have you always been year-round or did you make oh, yeah. that move? Oh, yeah. Always. You always be year-round. Yeah. Have to eat year-round. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's, that's true. Unfortunately, you have to eat year-round, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I thought haunters just didn't eat for ten and a half months out of the year. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing it wrong. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, running the house in October is totally different than the rest of the year, yeah. of course. And in this first room in October, I'm really pushing to give them 15 minutes of this room. Yeah. The rest of the year, as long as they're enjoying the stories, I can talk in this room for an hour and a half. <laughs> Which we can uh, personally attest to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True, true story, um, when I go through haunts, I usually set a timer. Uh -huh. 
oh. to, to measure how, roughly how long it is, just sure. so I can talk about it and think about it in that context. Yeah, you broke my timer. <laughs> <laughs> my timer, well, not, my um, timer didn't go that high. Even high. October, it takes an hour and a half. Yeah, and yeah. that's what it does in helpers in the house, pushing people through the house a little bit, and leading them through the house a little bit. Right. But of course, they don't do all the routines I do, and they don't tell any stories hardly except their own make makeup, and that's always entertaining too. Yeah, and uh, they just, I, I just tell them, just have a fun time, entertain people, be sociable, and yeah. you know, don't try to terrorize anybody, a little kid or something, you know. But I also tell people, like most probably. Haunted houses, you know, don't bring a little bitty kid here after 9.30 at night. Oh, yeah. Because that's when the people choke the one little kid yeah. in the room screaming and hollering, usually that's going to happen. You know? and, but I basically just try to treat everybody like a decent human being and hope they treat me the same way and yeah. enjoy what I provide for them. And it seems to work because I do have a lot of fans out there I've discovered oh, yeah. over the years yeah. from all over every place. Just nuts. I mean, yeah. That was that was the, that's how we ended up making the decision to make this pilgrimage, as I'm now referring to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's because our friend Kyle, who's another haunter, he did a he he likes he has a he is a tour guide in New Orleans, so he gets to go on like a uh, walkabout every summer when the tourist season's dead in the city. Yeah. <laughs> and he toured and he came through here and he went to Raven's Grin. And when he got back, it was the only thing he would talk about. Without talking about And he would talk about it without talking about it. It was an absolutely banana. He's like, you've got to go to Raven's Grant. Why? I can't say. <laughs> you've just got to go. Why? I can't say. And it's like this for like hours talking yeah. to him. And he would not, he, and, he, and I now realize now why. He couldn't. I'm at a yeah. loss well, trying to describe anything myself. Uh, early on, before I got financing to get this house, I was desperate to get financing. I had talked to a retiring carpenter who had several adult, almost of adult boys, and mm -hmm. I'm really glad that partnership didn't happen because <laughs> yeah, these are all my ideas and my sweat. Right. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Risk, and there you go. And I like it that way. Yeah. You know. And, uh, yeah, some people come here to get their ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? They're going to be using them so far away from here, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And uh, if that's fine, that's fine, you know. So. You know, honestly, I other than I, that's just it. Everything to me is so unique in this haunt. It's hard to take your ideas and apply it oh, elsewhere yeah. for me. Yeah. Well, I know that. Yeah. yeah, I know that. But some yeah. still do. <laughs> <laughs> or as, try. Yeah, as someone who is really good at hiding doorways and things mm -hmm. in my haunt, I'm really impressed with the way <laughs> that you camouflage yeah. the passages. Well, it's interesting how real stone looks. Normal next to real stone, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. A real brick next to real brick looks normal. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. You need some heavy hinges and good bearings, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking that's not just a Home Depot trip. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> well, I welded up all my hinges and stuff myself and yeah. designed them, and they're still working, so. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you are carpenter, welder. Um, the artist. Artist, CAD, <laughs> um, yeah. the, the, everything of this haunt. You're, you're the mastermind, the evil genius, or just evil, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> My sister's name is Gina, it's close, but okay. yeah, he's yeah. kind of evil sometimes. But. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, it's like a, we were talking about, it's such a diverse set of skills that you have to do. Like most haunters we talk to, like, yes, I'm the carpenter, I frame the haunt, and then someone else comes in and paints it, and someone else comes in and does the scene design of the lighting, and all that, and yeah, you just like, yeah, I got it, <laughs> so, yeah. I've got it all. Well, I, I'm free with my ideas to another haunter, though, because one time a guy, I was talking about his, his, um, his uh, spot room, you know, the black spots in the wall, the white room, it was just, right. so they hide, you know, dressed that same way, and I said, here's my idea for that. The room is white, with black spots, <laughs> You walk in, okay, where's the guy hiding in this costume that looks like the wall? Well, I guess there's nobody here. I guess he'd walk on break or something. So you go leave the room and you trip. What did I trip over? A dead Dalmatian dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the dog's dead, oh no. <laughs> oh, that would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. The dead dog said, oh, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> You know, I, I see things more in a humorous light than maybe some humor, some haunters do, just because I have to have that to balance out anything that might scare somebody here. Yeah. yeah. The sound of my voice, or look at my face, or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, you um, you definitely add in a lot of puns and humor, which I appreciate. Oh yeah. So. And I do. Yeah, it's definitely the funniest. I yeah. do adult tours. I do little kid tours. We, mm -hmm. my wife comes out and brings the kitty cat or the puppy out for the 
crying kid. Eh, puppy. Yeah. It's like swimming yeah. a switch. I gotta remember that one. Need, no, I gotta remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the most useful thing we learned at Raven's Run. <laughs> have a dog, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the most pl- applicable thing for us. Well, you know, I, I depend on people remembering this place and telling their friends and coming back someday. Yeah. yeah. And just a couple weeks ago, people all, were all coming here from 20 years ago, bringing their whole families with them, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, years ago, they I know Joe Jensen from Chicago and Leonard Pickle are having this conversation. Oh, my God, the, the birth rate's down for all the 12-year-old kids this year. They're now turning 12, and, and they're 13. Where, where are the business going to come from? Well, <laughs> if you ap- appeal to, you know, six, eight-year-olds on up to 38-year-olds, yeah, you got more business, potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Exactly. That's a good point. But Why if, exclude anyone? But if you want to have a haunted tent that's got real blood stains on it and hackers and choppers and screaming and hollering, well, a few people might go to that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the second time, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. And one thing that I, I really enjoyed was a lot. The scare doesn't come from the gore, as you were pl- I'm, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. No. It doesn't. In fact, I'm trying to think. I don't think there was any at all. No. But, but that's not where it comes from. <laughs> it's it's no. not the point. Well, you know, for years, the first, I don't know, 10 years I had this house, at the exit, when people be leaving, I'd say to them, what's the neatest, scariest, most impressive thing you ever see in another haunted house? And unfortunately, at that time, the answer was a blank look most of the time. Hmm. Either forgot it, didn't remember it, or something. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's pretty glum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then I heard a few stories that were impressive, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, how do we get out of this hallway? Walk through that fire. Walk through the fire? It wasn't a real fire, but it looked like a real fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a guy says, "Oh, you're accidentally coming in the break room. Sit down, and watch TV. It's a good slasher movie." Okay. And all of a sudden, the slasher guy comes out of the screen of the television set and attacks the guy sitting there. Yeah. How they do that? I, said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that worked. Yeah. That worked. But a doctor. It's funny too. My first best patrons were doctors. Nurses, dentists, chiropractors, morticians. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they all kind of had a dark sense of humor, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. They do. And yeah. uh, the one doctor, he was one of my first four or five customers. I got done taking him to my house. I thought, oh my God, it's going to be a tough way to make a living. He smiled one time. That was it. Mm-hmm. And all these people started showing up. How did you find out about my house? Dr. Vinji, Dr. Vinji, who's Dr. Vinji? <laughs> and the guy shows up driving a sports car with his daughter in the car with him. He had a big smile on his face. I didn't recognize him. That was Dr. Vinji. The guy smiled once went to my house. <laughs> but then he told me he went to a haunted house in New Mexico, one of the first ones that looked like a big castle, actually, the building. Had yeah. the, the guy walk around the parapet with a pump on his back and yeah. had live animals and snakes and bats and cages. Right. And then they took his little daughter and sat in an electric chair and said, we're going to electrocute you now. And we're like, oh, no. And they flipped the switch and everybody else in the room got a shock, but she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and that doctor brought and sent and paid for so many people when I first started. I just uh-huh. happened to run into his wife the other day in up Freeport and I said, I just have to tell you, you really helped me get started because if it hadn't been for you, well, but, you know. yeah. But I've had school classes bring the fifth graders here for being good kids. <laughs> and I thought, well, it'll only be wow, about two bus. A- <laughs> it'll only be about two busloads. No, this was the price. So they had like six busloads, one a day for a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some of the same school teachers show up with more than one group and have to figure out how to scare the teacher the next day in front of the kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Evil Jim says. Anyway. Well, <laughs> Well, you've got you've definitely got the house to do that. You have multiple opportunities <laughs> right. on every corner. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that I think it really is because no two tours are the same. Oh no, not even no. remotely. No. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I interact with the customers. The customers say I'm goofy, some goofy thing, and I'll go off on that. Yeah. Or they'll remind me of something else some other customer did or something, and uh, it's all fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Silly shit. You know, basically. <laughs> like me screaming shit pickle bouncing down there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I'd, I'd had the house and didn't know what else was going on. If so anybody else even had a haunted house. I, I knew Disney's so had a haunted house, but I think about else had them. Yeah. And a young farmer north of town, a sort of businessman, he has 10,000 acres, he got this little book in the mail on new businesses. He said, here, you want to, want to have this? Look at page such and such. And I've got it upstairs in the first room you go to. Here's a picture of a guy named Leonard Pickle from Texas, Honest Architect. Uh-huh. So I wrote him a letter and mailed it to him. He never got it. Yeah. Not quite an address. I don't hear it too late. The phone rang once a day. Hello, this is Leonard Pickle. I said, Honest Architect? Big sounds. How does this guy know me? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Just a fluke. And he says, you know, how do you get to Mount Carroll? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I told him. And then on the phone, he says, 
do you have chainsaws? My wife hates chainsaws. She went in the house and she smells like here's a chainsaw. No chainsaws here. Okay. Go ahead, hop through the house, <laughs> lens like this. Just looking at this, looking at that. Not really having a fun time, just looking at everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get to my time travel tunnel, which is still there. We use it for most little kids. A series of grocery store rollers through the tunnel this big. A medium size of the doll can fit through that, but you get a little cart and push it by your feet and pull the thing back on the rope. So Jeannie gets on the cart first, let her stand on there. And I said to Jeannie, don't worry, this will take you past the chainsaw so fast you won't even notice them. And I push up the tunnel, <laughs> and this big smile would land his face, oh my god, you know? Well, there were no chainsaws, you know? Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And then Joe Jens from Chicago Broad Group here one time, and he the guy that said, you're a performance artist. A what? <laughs> I can assume that, that fits in to the part of it. It's part. part. It, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, have you had a chance to go to any other haunted houses? Not really. No. No. I didn't think so with being no. here all the time. If it, well, my ex-wife she wanted to take one day a week off, like Monday. So we'd be closed on Monday. We'd come home. There's 20 people standing. Where in the hell you been for the last hour and a half? We're waiting for you. <laughs> okay, we can't take Mondays off. Let's take Wednesdays off. Come back. Where the hell you been? You know what I mean? <laughs> Phone's ringing. Oh, you know. yeah. Whereas that's an admission of like two or three bucks to head to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have the same teenagers come here three times in a month. Yeah. And they'd be from Wisconsin, Illinois, and uh, <laughs> Iowa. You know, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Hmm. A lot of fun that way. Okay. So, you talk, we talked a little bit earlier about the differences between. October and off season. We're here in the middle of July, late July. Mm -hmm. What are some of the differences we could expect if we came back in October? Well, in the season, you know, if somebody shows up here with their family, got little kids in it, we try to put them with a group that's going to be similar to. Yeah. Of course. If the drunks show up screaming and hollering, no, you can't come in, go away. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if, if uh, a bunch of college kids come in, well, we try to give them a little different show, a little more risque, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. And they and they respond to that well usually. Yeah. And uh, but I'm always trying to feel it out to see who I'm talking to because you never really know for sure. Right. And I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. I don't want to be that that person, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of tricky to do that and not offend someone. Sometimes to be more humorous than I think I should be, or more topical because <laughs> you know, I used to tell some joke I made up about O.J. Simpson when he was in in trial, I can't remember what it was now. Yeah. And yet somebody coming here probably remembers it, but I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. My first advertising, I wrote a long poem about the house. I had it mean, printed out and I'd read to people in the first room. And yeah. Like, something else to do. And I'd give them a copy of it. And years later, they told me down Clinton and I at this one bar, they had pool tables there and they put it on the wall. And they're playing pool, the young 25 year old guys. Do you remember that poem? Yeah. Or well, recite it for me, verbatim. Don't read it. And they have contests to remember my long poem. <laughs> I mean, that's different advertising, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, it is. It is. And then we had bumper stickers for a couple of years, and they became dorm door stickers. Mm -hmm. More valuable than a car bumper sticker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that place? Where is that? Oh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. But the, the teenager puts in an old junk car they have back then, and two weeks later the car's in the junkyard forever, and bumper stickers, good point, you know. Yeah. And I gave away little big pens when I said Raven's grin on them, and gave away a thousand pens in one, one week. And then they came back and wanted more pens. Well, wait a minute. So I saved a few back for a special occasion, like a birthday party group comes to the house. Yeah. And gave little kids pens. And this one kid, thanks for the pen. He takes it, looks right at me, and bends it back and forth and breaks it in half. Can I have another one? Uh, no, you no. can't. No. <laughs> yeah. But I can no. do creative things with the two halves you just created. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for each nostril. <laughs> and a hammer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I had to learn to be calmer on people and they totally act like that you know just yeah especially kids of course that's, but yeah that's a hard that's a tough that's a tough ask yeah yes. yeah we've only had problems with kids once trying to intentionally break stuff so we've been lucky Which there is, ugh, that's yeah. always a nightmare <laughs> well the first summer my first fall is open at the end of that fall i was taking inventory and i had numerous little things that were missing Mm -hmm. Things I had made, spent two or three hours making, and it's missing. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, let's put this in perspective, Jim. Have you ever made this much money in one month your entire life? Hell no. I mm -hmm. guess it's part of doing business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's time to look at it. So people just try to take little souvenirs from the house? Yeah. yeah. Well, one time I caught a guy in the bed slide. I looked down, and he had these trinkets of mine sticking out of his two pockets on his chest. Huh. And we were nothing but a damn thief. I reached out and took him out of his pockets. 
tipped you down. I'm done with him. I'm busy. I don't, I don't care. My helper from Weiser comes and says, he says he's going to sue you because you punched him. Well, guess what? I had video cameras. <laughs> never punched him, never threatened to punch him, never raised my fist. The leg was going to punch him. Right. He, he stuck by his story. The cop stands and said, here's the videotape. The officer take him away. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was about the most extreme I was ever trying to do things. Let's say I punched them. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so have you increased video cameras since that incident? We're just on the verge of buying new ones, yes. Yeah. I had a lot of video cameras at one time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they didn't help. And sometimes you wonder why I had them because they didn't help, you know. But uh, yeah. they're good to have. They yeah. Are, you know. yeah. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about advertising. What are you doing for advertising now? What's your big method for promotion? Or is it just people like us sitting and talking about it? <laughs> yeah. I quit advertising years ago. <laughs> I mean, I gave out well. free bumper stickers. And then I, I, oh, let's see, way back when, that guy talked me into putting that on the radio. Oh. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I did the voice. I provided the screaming woman in the background sound effects. <laughs> yeah. And I wrote the ad. Yeah. And it won third place in national com in state competition for small radio stations. Yeah. And the guy that talked me to doing it, and the guy that turned the knobs and turned the equipment off and on, got in a big fight over who's going to put that in their resume, and the one guy ended up quitting. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I did take my youngest son with me, so he got to see me be a little radio star. Cool. Oh, that's cool. And, this, and the ad was so simple. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm Jimmy Warfield. I have my own home house, my parents' basement. And then I got lazy. I bought a house that's really haunted. Ravens grin in. And soon the screaming starts in the background. 25 seconds, perfect. That was it. Cool. Cool. That's very nice. And other than that, yeah. I put ads in the Rockford paper for about six years and finally quit doing that because I didn't need to do that anymore. And, I, yeah. and part of the reason I asked that is we were we spent most of the morning roaming around Mount Carroll. Mm -hmm. and basically, I think we saw everything. Yeah. <laughs> you might have. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't take very long. But... um. We did not see, other than the signs, the um, actual street signs at Point, yeah. we didn't see anything mentioning... Well, on the highway... Car. The, car, the car on the highway yeah. and the, the signs, yeah. I, I pay, I don't know, 40 bucks a year for the state when I leave those up. They put them up by the... They make the signs. If the signs ever get vandalized or stolen, they replace the sign for nothing for me. Mm -hmm. I just wish the print was a little bigger than... That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I only... I barely called it, actually, oh, walking yeah. by. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... How is your relationship with the town? Oh, it's very, very good. Cool. Yeah. I mean, there's a few people that are just jealous because I'm doing what I want to do. <laughs> or they think I'm making millions of dollars here. Ha, ha. <laughs> but uh, uh, other than that, those people don't bother me, and I don't bother them, and there you go. Yeah. But I also, I don't have um, gory displays here. I'm not, I mean, I've right. a church group come to the house. Yeah. And I tell them the ghost stories and everything. Right. <laughs> and they don't, ah, that's fine, you know. But uh, the only church groups that don't come to the house are the local church groups. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay, yeah. you know. <laughs> so the local church groups stay away, but the far away ones come in. Yeah. 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 Um, the schools that came by, is that the local school? Uh, from 20 miles away. Okay. Yeah. The, that's fairly the, low. Well, the 20 mile away school has a lot yeah. more students, and they're also a little more with it, I think, you know, as far yeah. as what the kids would want to do. Right. Know? And that's, I think, how that happened, but I'm not 100% on that. Yeah. But, uh, it what got me when I first started, though, somebody discovered my house, they come to have a great time, and then they would keep it a secret. <laughs> Just bring their new boyfriend, new girlfriend here. Well, no, tell everybody. How am I going to stay in business? <laughs> it was a secret, you know? Yeah. But I did early on, this one woman just graduated from college in the advertising something field, and she says, oh, I'll advertise for you, and... She wrote a letter about my house and mailed it to everybody that had a radio station, a newspaper, a school newspaper. I got one call from one kid at one school. That was it. I thought, boy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, just impressing with the house, you know. Yeah. Obviously, I've never enjoyed using uh, you know, the same haunted house picture that I used in the newspaper. Right. <laughs> when they print the same haunted house three times on one page and they're all different. Mm -hmm. I'll just wait a minute. That's stupid. Yeah. Well, let me tell you how it really got started, though. I had the house three or four years. Thought I got enough to show the world. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it to the Chicago Tribune, mailed it to him, got there just in time to make the had, make the paper that had all the haunted houses listed in. Mm -hmm. Fold out about this big, and each listing is about that tiny, <laughs> except for mine is about that big. Yeah. Because I wrote it to him and said, 
It's an actual haunted house built in 1865. Optional guaranteed scare package. Admission, da da da, Mount Carroll, Illinois. Yeah. And it hit the stands, new stands, about 5:30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm sleeping on an army cot next to the phone, just because I was in my bed at the time. The phone rings, ring. I picked up, said, "Ravens been in." It's like a young black man said, "Holy shit!" And hung up the phone. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hung the phone back up and I rang again. <clears throat> Where's Mount Carroll? Blah, blah. Okay, hung up the phone and rang again. Well, as the sun started to come up. When I want to hang the phone, I just push down the little thing on the, rec- on the cradle and just ring again. And again, goodbye, ring, hello, ring, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> so after a couple hours of that, I turned the answer machine on, I walked uptown to the restaurants, the bars, and I walked in. I said, you know, I think a lot of people can come to Mount Carroll this weekend and see my haunted house. You might want to stay open an hour later, put on extra waitress to buy extra 50 pounds of hamburger. And then to a man, they all went, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Old town is crammed full of cars and people trying to find and get in my house. Wow. They, some stopped the sheriff's office just a block and a half away and said, where's this Raven Green in place? And by the way, how much do the houses in this town sell for? Hmm. <laughs> people bought some houses at the town because I was here. Yeah. yeah. The guy from East Dubuque, he'd been in town once, he came to my haunted house, he bought the bowling alley for five years. Wow. Jim the realtor. <laughs> yeah. Jim the tourist guy. Yeah. I tell everybody comes to my house about the Palisade State Park and Savannah, the big cliff you can stand and look down across the whole river on. Right. And everybody's impressed by that when yeah. they go there. Um, I am Mr. Information here. If they want to know this, they want to know that. A couple years ago, a couple showed up here, and she says, I just spent the last six years in the South Pacific looking for Amelia Earhart. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the parents are the ones how to, how to fly, fly are buried in this graveyard. What? I found her in Mount Carroll. I found Amelia Hart in Mount Carroll. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and up at the post office, they got the thing there, the sign tells you all about that woman and her parents. Right. And, you know, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the graveyard, you um, actually do something or work with a tour over there, too? Or well, I wrote the that... first original script they needed for that. Okay. I knew more about that little stuff than they did. And this is during October, is it oh, every yes. weekend, or is October it just... October nights, they call it, and okay. it moves around the month a little bit, and sometimes, well, sometimes they just don't even do it. Now, the last couple of years, they had a daytime walking tour, which I had no idea what to talk about. Right. But, you know, but at night, when they'd have it at night, they'd drive you up there, and I took Jessica up there for the first time a couple of years ago, and when you make the turnaround, you look back down this main street of the town, at night, with the moon on, it looks like you're almost in an airplane, like an aerial view, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and that's really neat. Yeah. And then they'd hire some, they'd get some guy to give the, give the talk, and he couldn't uh, pronounce his words well because he was too much in the sauce. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's the, the historical tour where you're talking about where they have people dressed up like the famous people in the cemetery giving information, pretending to be them. Right. And it's, right. that's a very cool way to bring history to, I guess, I was about to say history alive, but that's not really appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a woman in town that wrote a letter of paper the first time to do that, and she said, I don't think that's proper because, you know, it's a graveyard, and shouldn't be like, da, 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 da. and I thought about it, I thought about it, I'm, I'm going to go talk to that woman. I went to talk to her, and she said, that's okay, I've already changed my mind. Yeah. Because I remember she, my, her, she and her husband were down in New Orleans Cemetery, taking the tour with the tour guide. He's making jokes about it, and that's where they buried the mother-in-law of a little beast doing. Yeah. <laughs> so she could see both sides. Yeah. I thought she could, but, you know. Yeah, you know. She's, but she's also the woman who, her husband had died, the kids all moved away. She had a granddaughter in town. The granddaughter came up and said, happy birthday, Grandma. Oh, thanks for coming for my birthday. It's been a great day today to together. And that night, the grand, granddaughter's leaving the house. She says, well, I'll see you tomorrow, Grandma. She says... No, because I'll be dead tomorrow. Hmm. And she was. And it wasn't <laughs> self-inflicted. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> yeah. this, this town does seem to have more than its... And I, I come from New Orleans. <laughs> town seems to have more than its fair share of spookiness. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here wondering when I go back and listen to the audio, the uh, recorder is picking up. You should have interviewed me, young man. You couldn't hear my voice in your machine. I was right behind you the whole time. I could take your underwear and snap it for you. <laughs> Just Jacob. <laughs> but yeah, Mount Carroll definitely seems to have more than its share of haunted happenings and things, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, my parents, you know, grew up here and lived here all their lives, as did their parents, as did their parents, as did their parents. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, there's a lot of goofy history here too, funny stuff and goofy stuff people did and said. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there have been some real characters in town that everybody kind of <laughs> knew how they were, you know. <laughs> I'm not saying they're insane, they're just kind of different, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know, I try to enjoy my, my life and every day I have because, you know, we don't get many days really if you have to think about it in those terms. You know, like to get something done every day and something yeah. and say, well, that's what I did yesterday. Well, I'm looking around, I see yeah. that you got something done every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I would say so. Well, I've had some uh, personally odd experiences in my life that I don't talk about hardly ever any to anybody because most people just look at you and go, oh, really? <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't on drugs, never done drugs, never drank, never smoked. I have had a dozen concussions in football and diving board, but other than that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but none from haunting, interesting. No. <laughs> yeah. That's where like 90% of my concussions come from. Oh, really? Falling boards, um, kids getting scared and running the wrong way. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, you've stories. been tackled a bit. Yeah, I've been, I've, I've, I've been speared a few times. Yeah. Like people just run right through me. Some of those kids are not, I mean, we're talking kids, we're talking like teenagers a lot of these times, and some of them are not so little. Yeah. 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 Well, they, some are pretty damn strong for their size too, <laughs> especially yeah. when they're scared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We, I, I. I mean, I enjoy people's fearful reactions. At the same time, I try to, at the time, kind of try to make light of it so they're not too embarrassed. And from their friends, never come back again. You know? Yeah. You know? Well, like I, I told you, most, more, many more females come to this house than males. Yeah. Because if a boy screams, he's a girl. If a girl screams, she's a girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, there are parts of the tour where there's no clear way out, like. About and I remember like a few rooms in, I had absolutely no idea where we were. Yeah, I, I, I was totally lost. I, I I know you do hide and seek, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I I felt I couldn't find myself. I don't know how hide yeah. and seek would work. That's what I'm pointing out. At. Yeah, I have no idea where I was in relation to the outside of the house. Well, your tour What's last you know? night was longer than the average tour because I want I, you you might never be able to come back here again, so you might as well get it now while I'm still alive. You know, mm-hmm. but anyway, <laughs> but. At the same time, I don't do everything for every tour. Yeah, right. obviously. And so they come back, and I just pick and choose. I don't know if I've done this before or not for them, but I do it. And by the reactions, I can tell, oh, I didn't see that before. Oh, okay. You mm-hmm. know, I, mean, I have a thing in the kitchen that I have to do a little tinkering on, not the one I showed you because that actually worked. Yeah. But uh, there's a little <laughs> thing I have to do a tinkering on. I used to scare the hell out of people. It hasn't worked for about a year now. Yeah. It's just minor un- in adjustment. You know, that's all it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, uh, I like to have options as far as where you go to the house and how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And, and the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like I said, it, uh, it's just everything in this house drips of how much work and love you put into it. Or mm-hmm. it's absolutely, like I said, it's, well, I, thank you. I'm so blown away by your, your effort yeah. and by how much you've done. And as someone that builds these types of things from time to time, I, I know how much time it must have taken, and I am thoroughly blown away. <laughs> well, I, I lose all sense of time by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. said you, you know, used to keep yeah. track of your time. It's one of the things you said. Yeah. Well, one thing that helped me out, the first couple years I had the house, they had a Thursday night junk auction in Savannah, just 10 miles away. I would go down to the pickup truck. I'm only going to spend 15 bucks tonight. I didn't spend 25 and I got that piece of furniture, those piece of furniture, and... Antique dealers can't believe it, but they are standing right there. When I bid two fifty for something, it should have been fifty or something. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That that would have been great finds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would have liked those. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is they used to sit right there. I'd open yeah. the door and a few people run in. They all sit in the same chair at the same time and crash. Oh. City. I like to duplicate those in steel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now try yeah. and break it. You know? Yeah. Well, like the piece of steel in the backyard that does the one big special effect. Yeah. It's a 16-foot-long piece of steel. It's only about five inches high by less than a half-inch wide. It's got holes in it that I didn't put there. I can't drill a hole in that piece of steel. Yeah. Because it's the front scrape ridge off a bulldozer blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wow. given that. Just given it. Here you go. Can you use it? Maybe. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it helps to have the reputation of... The guy who could do this. <laughs> well, my backyard maze. So all those yeah. doors, those steel doors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are two dumpsters in Savannah off the Inc. Low Income Housing Place. Yeah. Two dumpsters. So I rented a big pickup truck and a trailer and brought them right home for nothing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
I think most families like to have about 47 steel doors, wouldn't they? <laughs> yes, they would. Yes, they would. Yeah, I can attest to that. <laughs> right place at the right time. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Of course, yeah. when, I first, when I stopped working for my dad completely to start doing this full time, mm-hmm. I had more opportunities come that way. Right. Because I'd be here all the time working, somebody would walk up, I'd talk to them, promote the place so they'd have something I could use or want to give me or, you know yeah. what I mean? But I did have no fence at the time, just the, the parking lot, and then went downhill and there's my yard. I walk out in the morning, here's three old microwaves. <laughs> okay, well, I got little micro switches that I can take. Other than that, eh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got stuff you didn't want, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, one time some, some guys had a dental supply place, had a whole warehouse full of old dental chairs. Mm-hmm. And they gave me one, I think. No, not the dentist gave me one. And so you, you push the button, you can't hear a sound. It raises straight up in the air 18 inches. Wow. But it weighs three tons. <laughs> and I found out late, it's an open oil reservoir. There's no lid on the oil thing. You tip it, you got oil over the floor. What the hell? You know, where'd oh. that come from? Mm, wow. Yeah, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> but I always want to go straight up in the air without making a sound. You couldn't do yeah. anything. Yeah. Quality material, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, how about dental warehouse? Remember the dental lights we picked up? Yeah, those were the... Um... The prison dental lights. Yeah, my, my dad works at a prison, and they were getting rid of some... At least he tells you he works at a prison. Never comes yeah. home, but... No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, he, um, he brought us some of the big dental lights. With the big like weird hinges. and, and it like, wow. move like this. And, uh, Just look yeah. at that light would scare me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're very bright. <laughs> they're, they're, the only problem is I think those lights, they don't make the bulbs anymore, so once those bulbs go out, we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they have a big light for the prisoners, so if the prisoner starts to act up and cheers, take the big light and go wham! In the face <laughs> exactly. He's out. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's what they use instead of Novocaine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's where they use the Chevy 2, okay, and maybe the Impala, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no more Novocaine. <laughs> so, what are some of your future plans for this place? Try to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. That's my big That's future plan. That's a good plan. plan. That's a good plan. I, thought I was in danger of losing that the other day, but now I pulled through, so you know, mm. I couldn't swallow and couldn't eat and couldn't mm. drink any water. Well, it just went away. Yeah. Uh, this seems like a place under constant evolution. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about the hide and seek since we mentioned yeah. oh, it yes. earlier? And okay. Uh, when did that get started? How and, recently? And was what that? the heck is it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is whatever the customers really want it to be. Uh-huh. Sometimes they sit in this room and I tell them, you know, don't go out this door, you'll be in dog poop land. Uh-huh. And don't do this and don't do that. And don't walk in the attic where there's no floor. And yeah. it's a good idea. That, and where that's the restroom is, and we just set them free. If they want to go down the slide, that's fine. We have to operate that one slide, of course. And they have to carry their slide blankets back up if they go down more than once, which doesn't always happen, but we try. And... Uh, the best hiding place in the adult hiding go seek is up in Charlie's Tavern because they never find you up there. <laughs> <laughs> right next door. Yeah, plug for Charlie's there. Yeah. And uh, I think haunters like Charlie's Tavern because of all the taxidermy animals they have hanging on the wall. Yeah, the three giant yeah. bison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so, but you know, the, ta- the hide and seek can be for little kids and a couple of adults and it can be whatever. And uh, sometimes we wish we weren't doing that because they get a little rough on the house, you know. Yeah. Bangy, slimy, bangy, crashy sort of things and stuff. But mostly it, it works out okay. Um, sometimes they hold, hold their breath. If some groups come in, if they're going to play, I can go see. The house survived this, you know. Mm-hmm. But it works out. The best hide and seek was the hide and seek we had October 31st at the end of the night for our employees because Jim was it for the zombie tag hide and seek. <laughs> and so I counted or whatever it did, and I started wandering around the house. I could hear voices on the side of the wall, but I knew by the time I ran around the wall, they'd be down the other way and they'd get away from me. Yeah. So I finally ran, I finally thought, you know, I'm just going to run down this concrete underground tunnel and scream as loud as I can, like a total maniac. You know, it'll flush somebody out. <laughs> it did. <laughs> you know, I went help her, Jeff, all night. He said to Jessica, I thought Jim was going to kill us. He just, he said, you know what? He's going to kill us. And he just, and Jeff's a big guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <coughs> but I had the best yeah. hiding places because it's my house, obviously. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though Jessica figured out one hiding place. There's a big, uh, a big upside down plastic tote inside. Yeah, it's been there for years. And I was in the tote. <laughs> the tote was about two inches off the ground. And my legs were dying. I oh, please find me now. Please find me now. <laughs> and you're just another person walking, walk. 
Would he be inside that tote? No. And I jump at him. Yeah. <laughs> and Jessica had a hiding place in the basement that nobody could find her. Yeah. And when Jeff would walk by, she'd say nasty things about Jeff. She he couldn't find her. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's something that you can like rent the house for for a night and yeah. do that. It's by the hour, by right? The, yeah, by the hour. By the yeah. hour, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, and it was mm-hmm. something I have not actually seen any other haunt do. No. No, they're, they're big into escape rooms now. I've... I have an inescapable room. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, you do. You looked down at through the bars last night. Yeah. You know, down the yeah. hallway. It was lit up, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I actually built a chain and pipe ladder to get down there because this girl used to work for me, wanted to be down there for October. I got all built, and she said, I, yeah, no, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's sort of like being in a, a, a grave, actually a hole in the ground, laying in the coffin for Halloween. And next year, the J.C. Lamp didn't do that. Why didn't they do it? He got tired of having dirt kicked in his face and people spitting on him. Oh, okay, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always a drawback to anything you want to do, it seems like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's too much of a price to pay, unfortunately. <laughs> that is very true. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, advertising. Yeah, for years, I had my cars decorated and I'd drive around them. And yeah, that got a lot of people's attention. Those those cars are very attention grabbing. We, we yeah. took a, fo- a couple photos of the one, especially of the square. Yeah, yeah, of the square. We'll have to put those in the blog post whenever we uh, post this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very attention. They're right across the street from the hotel. Yeah, and, that we were at. Yeah. We were, yeah. well, right, right next to sheriff's office too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so whether you're going to jail or going to the hotel, yeah. you one, know where Raymond's Grin is. That's one thing when other hunters talk online about security. I tell him, well, I dial my phone, and about 20 seconds later, the policeman's right here in the car. Yeah. <laughs> 350 feet or so from the policeman's office, you know, and we got yeah. the county and the city police here, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I noticed that on the way in. It's... Yeah, and I do like that everything's within walking distance of you, um, oh, if yeah. you wanted to stay here in town, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, you stay at the Glenview, you eat at Rita's and Charlie's, you drink uh, at Charlie's, Bridgewater. Bridgewater, sorry, <laughs> Bridgewater, stay, drink at Charlie's, eat at Rita's, also Charlie's, there's also the place next door to Charlie's we haven't been to yet because they haven't been open. Seavers. Seavers, yeah. yeah. And then come here, it's like you can literally make a day and two days out of it and yeah. never get in your car. When it first opened up, in a little while, a rock and roll band from Chicago gamer spent the night actually, I was nice, like a haunted bed breakfast, and they were sitting in Seavers and having ordered a second round of drinks. And the waitress uh, brought him the bill. And the guy says, quick, quick, another round of drinks before the price goes up. This must have been a special price. <laughs> <laughs> special compared to Chicago, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, we were, uh, we were happy with the prices. Uh, Charlie's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A little too happy, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my great-grandfather, Ely, was a bartender in this house. For mm-hmm. seven, eight years of life, in the 1880s. That, yeah, I didn't know that until just about six months ago. Yeah. He had a, his full time job. He had two mules, Joe and Jenny, and wagging them down the street, hauling from the railroad downtown to merchants, and that was about it. But, uh, yeah, so I do have a family connection with the house in that respect. Yeah. And I have people that told me their stories when they used to live in these apartments, and, uh, yeah. yeah. I, most of those people that tell the stories would not be capable of making up and telling the story either. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people actually do, but most right. people I know, yeah. I don't think they're doing that. Yeah. Well. So, would you have any advice for someone who wanted to get something like this? Not that there's anything like this. <laughs> or ever <laughs> will be again. <laughs> well, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head and you said about the hours I spent here and the ambition I spent here. Because the one reason I wanted to buy this house to start with, mm-hmm. my uh, one wife, who I have two children with, she, uh, didn't make any house payments on our house we used to live in for about eight months and didn't even tell me. Oh. It wasn't really her fault because I was working with my dad full time and he didn't pay very well or very often. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we got no place to live. Where are we gonna live? Yeah. This house is for sale. Well, if I can get the money, so I tried for about how many months to get the money. I finally got the money. I went back to our house and I walked in and I said, because she said, yeah, it'd be a good place to live. She went to the daycare center and I had the house in the basement. I walked in and I said, I got the house today. And she just frowned and looked away. I thought, what's that mean? Yeah. Well, that meant she wasn't staying with me. She was down the road. Oh. Yeah. But when I came home and her, her witchy mother was there and her friends all packing stuff on the table, 
I see the shoebox sitting there and it got my attention. Well, we don't keep shoeboxes. What the hell is in that shoebox? I opened it up and there's a snake skin in the shoebox, a dried snake skin. Hmm. I said, Kathy, I found your mother's winter coat. <laughs> <laughs> and she went <laughs> but her okay, mother, I'm going to steal mother. that one later <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man well, so I came down here with no wife and no kids yeah and I had four kids total yeah. and some of them well one just graduated from high school that year and one was the year behind him and then the two little boys yeah and that wasn't pleasant yeah <clears throat> I think that's about all the time we have. Um, so yeah, this is Raven's Grin Inn. If you need to look it up, it's okay. What's the website? Haunted Raven's Grin. Haunted Raven's Grin. I was going to get it wrong, that's why I turned to you. <laughs> and it's four one one North Carroll Street, Mount Carroll, Illinois. Um, you know what? You got to come at least once. <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, it, this should be like a legal requirement. In the industry, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. You're not allowed to work in the haunted attraction industry if you don't come at least once. I mean, yeah. new rule <laughs> from my book. Well, Jim, thank you so much for spending the hour with us and regaling yes. us with your stories. Thank it you has welcome. been mm-hmm. an amazing, amazing time. Um, dear listeners, um, thank you very much for joining us. And next week we're doing the news. Yeah. So we will see you guys next time.